And coming up next year, we got Kevin Lee taking on Renat Fakhradinov. And this is a tough one for me, man. I, I know a lot of people, they're penciling in Fakhradinov as a lock. But uh, I don't really agree with that, man. I mean, I feel like Fakhradinov is a very unproven guy. And then you got Kevin Lee on the other side of the spectrum where he proved himself at one point. But then he fell off, got cut from the UFC. Now he's back. His last fight against Diego Sanchez, I would say, is one of his... Worst performances I've seen and he ended up tearing his ACL in that fight and hasn't fought in a long time And I don't really know what the problem was between the UFC and Kevin Lee, but obviously it was something that Was outside of fighting because I don't think The UFC saw that performance against Diego Sanchez and we're like, oh my god, we got to get Kevin Lee back It's just something happened where at that point they weren't on the right page he got cut and obviously the UFC said, you know, we can welcome back Kevin Lee at this point. We still think he's UFC level. He's a name. And um, we're ready to have him back here. So hopefully that signifies that they know a little bit more maybe about Kevin Lee's personal life or maybe they know some inside information where they're feeling comfortable that Kevin Lee is going to be coming in here and performing to his optimum. But we got Kevin Lee where he's moving up to 170 and historically has never performed that great at that weight class. I think he got a win there, but... He has a couple of losses there too, and um, he had that fight with RDA where he was doing good in that fight early, but ended up getting tired, finishing the fourth round, and just at 170, he hasn't, he hasn't had the success he did at 155, but he's 30 years old now. This is the time, man, for Kevin Lee. I mean, he has so much motivation here. Everyone wrote him off, wrote him for dead. They're basically saying that he's being brought in as fodder for Fokker Dinoff to basically just be a free victory for him and no one has any faith in Kevin Lee anymore so it's a very weird position for him but he can go out here and get a dominant win and turn all those haters around right away he'll be right back in a position of power so this is a huge fight it's like Kevin Lee could have a whole career renaissance just off getting a win here and he knows that you know I, I feel like he knows this is a huge pivotal fight for his career. If he wins this fight, he's going to be in top 10, top 15 fights, making big money again in his next fight. So he needs this one. He needs to show up on point because if he doesn't, let's say we're on the opposite end where Kevin Lee shows up, looks like he did against Diego, gets dominated by Fokker Dinoff or God forbid, or I don't know, just say, I just don't think it's likely, but let's say he gets knocked out in the first minute or something. Then, you know, it's like, is he done completely? Then you could really start to think that. But when you're looking at these two guys, like when you look at Renat Fakhardinov, we haven't seen much striking from him at all. I mean, all we've seen from him on the feet is him, him throw that big overhand. And he has power. He dropped Brian Battle. We saw him knock out Eric Spicely with one punch. He used to fight at 185. So he's a big guy, especially compared to Kevin Lee. Um, and he's used to fighting bigger men. But... The striking, you'd have to think Kevin Lee has the advantage. I mean, Kevin Lee, southpaw, good kicks. He has uh, decent boxing, athletic, and he isn't a great striker either. But Kevin Lee's, in my opinion, shown a lot more diversity in his striking, a lot more trickiness. He has a lot more ability. You know, he throws kicks. He throws different punching combinations. Whereas Fokker Dinoff, I really only see him throw the, the big overhand and he has power. And then Fokker Dinoff in his two UFC fights, he has like 13 minutes of control time in both those fights where he just closed the distance against the cage, took those guys down, held them down. And that's kind of Fokker Dinoff's game. He isn't necessarily a big ground and pounder. He isn't a big transitioner. He isn't a big uh, submission threat. He just likes to kind of stay heavy in full guard or half guard and just pound you out, um, control the position and bleed the clock. And against Kevin Lee, man, it's like, are, is he really going to be able to just go out there and just out-wrestle Kevin Lee, take him down, hold him on the ground, and beat him that way? I mean, I don't know about that. I really don't. I feel like that's that's a tough proposition, man. I mean, I don't know anybody. I'm trying to think that out-wrestled Kevin Lee. I think he had more takedowns than every opponent he's ever faced in the UFC. And he's been taken down a few times. He's been put on his back. He got submitted by RDA. But... That happened in the fourth round where Kevin Lee probably would have won in a three-round fight. And RDA has the striking to set up the takedowns that I don't know if Fokker Dinoff has. And personally, I mean, if this was like Kevin Lee fighting frequently, looking good, I think he'd be 
an easy pick for me in this fight, just off what the, these two guys have done in their careers. But it's extremely difficult for me to trust Kevin Lee right now. Like I, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick Kevin. I'm gonna pick Kevin to win by decision. But man, I don't feel good about this pick. I don't feel good about picking Fakarino off either, though, just because. I feel like Kevin is being underrated as a wrestler here, man. I feel like Fokker Dinoff, we've seen him lose position. We've seen him get taken down by Andreas Michalaitis. I don't necessarily know how Fokker Dinoff is off his back as well. If I'm Kevin Lee, I'm trying to take him down too. And I just feel like Kevin Lee has the more more ways to victory. I think that he's he's fought the better opponents. I think that if he could stuff the takedowns and keep it standing, he's going to do better there. And if he could put Fokardinov on his back, he could probably have success too. And I know everyone kind of left Kevin Lee for dead. They're saying he's done. They're saying that there's no chance he's going to win this fight. But I'm going to give him that. I'm going to give him that chance, man. I'm going to say that he's coming back here at 30 years old. He knows it's his last opportunity for big success in the UFC. He's been begging to fight this freaking Dagestani wrestler style for years. So this is his chance, man. This is his opportunity. And I'm going to say Kevin Lee comes in here, shuts everybody up. And I don't even know if this is necessarily going to signal he's back or he's going to make a run. But I think this is a good matchup, honestly, because it's a guy that has limited striking and only wants to take you down. And Kevin Lee is extremely hard to take down. He's going to be very physical, even at 170. And I think Kevin Lee could win the stand-up. I think he can get some takedowns of his own, win some scrambles. And, um, you know, show everyone that USA Wrestling is there too, man. I mean, I think a lot of people don't give the credit to USA Wrestling when they're going against this Dagestani guys. And um, we've seen in Bellator a few times where Hafion Stotts and some other guys have been able to beat... Uh, Magomedov and these Dagestani wrestlers but in the UFC we haven't really seen the, too many of these matchups honestly where it's like a Dagestan fighter against a very high level wrestler um so it's gonna be fun to watch this one and I'm gonna give Kevin Lee the benefit of the doubt one more time pick him to win here maybe I'll look like an idiot maybe it'll be a horrible pick but uh I'm going Kevin Lee by decision